Hi, first graders. My name is Ms. Boyle, and I'm a reading teacher at John Stanford International School. And last year, I taught first grade. And right now, I am going to be teaching you a lesson this week about reading. So thank you so much for watching. First of all, I want to let you know how much your teachers miss you. I know this for a fact because I miss my students so much. One of the things I miss about my students is how curious you guys are and how good you are at making discoveries. So I thought I would share a discovery that my daughter, who is a second grader at Kimball Elementary, I thought I would share a discovery that she made the other day, and it is this pine cone. Look at the size of this pine cone. It is the size of my head, and it is really heavy too. I thought this was a really cool discovery that she made. So I'm gonna go and put it here in my little home classroom. And I hope that you guys are making lots of great discoveries during this time too. Well, speaking of discoveries, let's start making some reading discoveries. So we're gonna get started with the lesson. And you might have seen a chart that looks something like this, maybe in your classroom, or maybe if you watch some of the other videos I've done, you've seen this chart exactly. But this is a chart of what good readers do. So let's go ahead and read it together so we can remind ourselves what good readers do. So, good readers make connections to their lives, make connections between books, retell stories in their own words, visualize, wonder about what they're reading, and make connections to information they already know. Today, we're gonna focus on this one right here, visualize. That means that you make a picture in your mind, you really picture it, not just what it looks like, but what it smells like, what it tastes like, what it feels like, and you get to make this like movie in your head. That's called visualizing. So here's our target, visualize the book. Now, I probably had some practice visualizing during fiction, made up stories, but today we're gonna do some visualizing while reading nonfiction, which can really help us understand the book better. So, we are going to read together this book. It is called Throw Your Tooth on the Roof, Tooth Traditions from Around the World, and it is written by Selby B. Beeler and illustrated by G. Brian Karras. So, this book is about tooth traditions. What's a tooth tradition? What's a tradition? A tradition is something that a group always does together. Like uh, many countries have traditions, many families have tradition. My family has a tradition of every Friday is pizza movie night where we order pizza and we watch a movie. That is our tradition. And I bet you have a lot of great traditions that you do with your family too. But this is about tooth traditions. What happens? What do you do with those baby teeth when they fall out? And so I want you to think about that. And remember, first graders, that when I ask you a question, I would love for you to share it out loud. Now you might be thinking, but Ms. Boyle, I don't have anybody next to me to share with. Well, here's the thing. If you do have somebody next to you, a grown-up can totally count. So you can share out loud with your grown-up, you can share out loud with a brother or a sister, even a baby brother or a baby sister. And if you don't have any of them, you can go get a stuffed animal and share out loud with your stuffed animal or even just an imaginary friend. But I would really love for you to be saying the words out loud and be sharing the questions out loud because that's how we do our best thinking is when we are saying it out loud and talking. So in that vein, I'm gonna ask a question and I want you to say it out loud. So if one of your teeth falls out, what do you do with it? I can't hear you, but I still want you to say it out loud. So what do you do? Do you have different traditions? I bet lots of you guys have really fun things that happen when your tooth falls out. We're gonna read this book and find out what other countries do, what fun things they do when their teeth fall out. So, we're gonna start. And the first part of this book has a really great map because we're talking about tooth traditions around the world. So they wanna show you all around the world so we can kind of point to different countries. Like, here's the United States. Seattle would be like right here, right there. Here's the United States. Here's Af or South America, We've got Africa got Europe, and Asia, and Australia. So these are all the different parts. And I'm gonna show you each part, each where each place is when we're talking about their different tooth traditions. So we're gonna start off with the United States, which I told you was right here. 
So we're gonna start off with United States and I'm gonna read the tooth tradition in the United States. And this might be one that you know. It says, United States, I put my tooth under my pillow. While I'm sound asleep, the tooth fairy will come into my room, take my tooth and leave some money in its place. Do you have a connection? Yeah, I have a connection with that one. That's what the tooth, that's, that's what happened to my teeth too. So I wanna read this again. And this time when I'm reading it, I want you to visualize. I want you to picture it in your mind. Sometimes it's helpful to close your eyes while you're visualizing so you can really see that mind picture. I'm gonna read it again slowly as you make that mind picture. I put my tooth under my pillow while I'm sound asleep the tooth fairy will come into my room, take my tooth, and leave some money in its place. Did you come up with a mind movie? What did your tooth fairy look like? Yeah, go ahead and tell whoever is next to you, even if that's the imaginary friend, what did your tooth fairy look like? Like from that mind movie. Yeah, I bet you there was a lot of different looking tooth fairies. I bet there was a lot of glitter though in a lot of those tooth fairies. Nice job visualizing. We're going to read another one as we continue to visualize. So this one, we're gonna read from South America, which if we go back to our map, South America is right, this country right, or this continent right here in Argentina. We're gonna read in Argentina, which is down here at the bottom of South America. So in Argentina, this is their tooth tradition. I put my tooth in a glass of water during the night, a little mouse called El, El, Ratonci El Ratoncito will come and drink all the water, take my tooth, and leave me some coins or candy in the empty glass. That's a fun one. We totally should visualize this one. Let's visualize this one. I'm gonna read it nice and slow. I'm gonna ask you to describe what your Ratoncito looks like. All right, here's the tradition. I put my tooth in a glass of water. During the night, a little mouse called El Ratoncito will come and drink all the water, take my tooth, and leave me some coins or candy in the empty glass. Did you visualize? Show me with your hands. How big was Ratoncito? Was he like a really big or was he a little tiny mouse? Show me with your hands. Yeah, maybe that size. That's the cool thing about visualizing is that you get to make your own movie and it can look totally different from other people's because it's your own mind. Pretty fun. All right, we're gonna read another tooth tradition. This is from Cameroon and we're still gonna visualize. I'm gonna read it once and then we're gonna visualize and I'll read it again. All right, in Cameroon, I throw my tooth over the roof shouting, take this bad tooth and bring me a new one. Then I hop around my house on one foot and everyone laughs. Oh, they did do a picture on this. That's a fun picture. But the cool thing about visualizing is yes, you have this picture that shows you, but your mind movie, people can move and you can hear what people sound like and you can smell and you can hear and you can feel. So I'm gonna read this again, this Cameroon tooth tradition, or tradition and I want you to visualize. I throw my tooth over the roof shouting, Take this bad tooth and bring me a new one. Then I hop around my house on one foot and everyone laughs. What did you picture in your mind? I mean, really picture somebody hopping around on one foot and everybody laughs. I wonder why they hop around on one foot. What a fun tradition that is. All right, we are going to read another one. We are going to read one that is in Russia. And here is Russia. So remember, here's, Un oh, here's United States over here and where we live. Russia is right there. So this is a tradition from Russia. My mother said to put my tooth in a mouse hole in the ground. So they put their tooth in a mouse hole. And there you have a little mouse hole that they put their tooth into right there. Huh. Let's visualize that one. My mother said to put my tooth in a mouse hole in the ground. Well, there we had another mouse before that drank water and left candy, but this one, you just bring the tooth to them, I guess. Did you picture what? What did you picture in your mind? Did you picture the mouse going, huh? What are you doing with a tooth? All right, we're gonna read one more tooth tradition today. We're gonna read this tra tra tooth tradition from Vietnam. All right, so here's the next one. 
I throw my lower tooth on the roof and throw my upper tooth under the bed. So that's right there in Vietnam. So if they lost a lower tooth, it goes on the roof and a top tooth goes under the bed. Hmm, let's go ahead and picture that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it one more time and I want you to picture a little kid putting their teeth on the roof or under the bed. I throw my lower tooth on the roof and throw my upper tooth under the bed. In your mind movie, was your, was your kid throwing it up or throwing it down? Which tooth did they lose? Up or down? <laughs> My, my, my kid that I was picturing threw it up on the roof. All right. Those are the traditions that we're going to read today. There's so many more traditions in this book, and we're going to do this again um, later this week, and we're going to read more tooth traditions. But we're going to stop right there for now. So what tooth tradition did you like? There's a couple in there. Remember, we had the United States. We know that one. Cameroon. We had Russia. We had Vietnam. I want you to go ahead and tell whoever's next to you or that imaginary friend, or that stuffed animal. What tradition did you like and why? Why did you pick that one as your favorite? Go ahead and tell. Did you share? Awesome. I think uh, the one that I liked the most, I don't know, I think I like I liked the idea of ratoncito, like drinking water and then leaving behind candy. That's kind of a fun one. Um, now, I also wanna talk about something else that good readers do is we also wonder do you have any wonderings about some of these uh, some of these tooth traditions? Things that you're like, huh, I wonder. I'm curious. What do you wonder about any of these tooth traditions? Once again, go ahead and tell out loud whoever is next to you. What do you wonder about these tooth traditions? I really wonder in the, um, I'm wondering about in the, um, in Cameroon, how, why do they have to throw it opposite? Like, why does it have to go up? Or actually, that was Vietnam. That was the Vietnam one. Why do they have to throw a top tooth down and a bottom tooth up? wonder how that happened. It makes me curious. All right, so nice job wondering, readers. Now, we're going to go back to visualizing. And that is definitely something good readers do. And I think we really enjoyed this book a lot more because we had that chance to visualize. We were able... <coughs> to make a picture in our mind as I was reading that really helped us understand and learn information. So I went ahead and actually drew one of my mind movies. I drew a visualization. So here, I drew this, and this is my, uh, this is from the Russia tradition where they would throw it in a mouse hole. So here is my mouse hole, and here is my little mouse, and then I put a, then he had a thought bubble, and he had a question mark going, what is a tooth doing here? Like, do the mice, they're like, wait, there wasn't a tooth here yesterday, and now I suddenly have a tooth in my mouse hole? So that was, I, I was picturing a very confused mouse in my visualization, <laughs> which I think is kind of fun. So I would love for you guys to do visualization too. So after you're done watching this video, I want you to find a book, and it'd be great you could do a nonfiction book, a book that's teaching something, so that you can practice visualizing. So I want you to pick that book and I want you to read it for 15 minutes. So you can set a timer or you can ask a grown-up set a timer or you can just read it for a good little time, about a time, and then be like, I think that was a good amount of time. So I want you to read for 15 minutes and then at the end, you are going to get an opportunity to draw your visualization. So if your parents printed out a packet that they got from the schools, you might have a sheet that looks like this. Now, if you don't have a sheet look like, that looks like this, that's totally okay, because you can just use a blank piece of paper and just do it on the back. But if you do have this sheet, we have this person and they're thinking, and this is their thought bubble. This is their visualization. So it asks you to write the title of your book, and then the directions are, draw a picture of what you visualized while reading your book. So here, you can draw a picture just like I did on my sheet. And if you don't have a sheet, you can just write the title of your book, and then you can draw a picture of what you visualized. All right. Thank you so much, first graders, for watching this video. Don't forget to do your 15 minutes of independent reading, and then don't forget to draw that visualization. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Take care, and I'll talk to you later.